We've seen before that the relational model allows special values null. So the relational model allows missing attribute values. We can leave table cells empty. And this is indicated by the special value null. This value null is not part of the domain of this column. Formally, the set of possible values of the domain is extended by a new special value null. So it's important to understand that null is neither the number zero nor the empty string. A null value is different from all the values of any data type. Null values are used to model a wide variety of scenarios. They can be used to indicate that no value exists. For instance, a student might not have an email address. They can also be used to indicate that the value exists but is unknown. A student might have an email address, but it might not be known to the administration. And null values can also be used to indicate that a certain attribute is not at all applicable for a particular tuple. For instance, we may have exercises that are for training purposes only and that will not be graded. And finally, we can use null values to indicate that any value will do. So we don't care what value will be filled into this place. Since null values have such a wide range of applications, the negative impact of this is that we cannot have a clear semantics for null values. So what are the advantages of using null values? So assume we would forbid null values. Then we would need to split many relations into a number of subclasses. So for instance, think of the student's relation. There, some students have an address and others don't have an address. If we forbid null values, then we have to split this table into two tables, students with address and students without address. Alternatively, what we can do is we can take the address column out of the student's table and we can create a separate table, student's address, that links the students to their address. But in both approaches, we will need more tables and we will need additional join operations in order to query all these tables. Also, if no values are not allowed, then there's the high risk that users will start inventing fake values to fill the missing columns. So what's the problem? with fake values. The problem with fake values is that different users will invent different fake values. Some users will fill the empty string, others will make a dash, some users will write not applicable, unknown, or whatsoever. But then you have a database where the simple fact that a certain value does not exist or is not known is represented in many, many different ways. And it will be very difficult to query the database and find these values or find the legal values. So what are the possible problems around null values? First of all, we have to know that SQL uses a three-valued logic. We have the truth values true, false, and unknown. For users that are accustomed to the usual two-valued Boolean logic, the outcomes can often be very surprising. In particular, any comparison with null will always result in unknown. So let's have a look at these queries. Which of these queries returns the rows where the column A is null? Let's start with query 1. So we select all the rows from R where A is equal to 42. I think we all agree that this query should not return the rows where A is null. The second query returns all the rows from R where A is not equal to 42. If you are used to the usual two-valued logic, then you would expect this query to return also the rows where A is null but it does not. 
The reason is that the comparison of a with 42, if a is null, this will result in unknown, and not unknown is still unknown. And the third query directly asks for all the rows of R where A is equal to null. But again, any comparison involving null will result in unknown. So even null is equal to null results in unknown. So these rows will not be returned even by the third query. So somewhat surprisingly, none of these queries returns the rows where A is null. If we want to have the rows where A is null, we have to use a different syntax. We have to explicitly say we want the rows where A is null. Null values can also cause other troubles if you think of application programs. In many programming languages, the use of null values is considered bad programming style. In some programming languages, null values do not even exist. So when reading data from a database, these values first have to be converted into another representation. Since null values can lead to complications, SQL allows to control whether null values are allowed or not for a certain attribute. By default, they are allowed. If you want to exclude them, we can do this by explicitly mentioning this as a constraint in the create table statement. So here null values are excluded from the attribute sit, from first and from last, but they are allowed for the address. So we cannot leave table cells in the column sit, first or last, empty. And this has certain advantages, for example, declaring things as not nullable leads to simpler application programs and it leads to fewer surprises during the query evaluation.